I don't know what it is about an edgy metal head fixed to a handle that makes people think, you know what, this is not dangerous enough. We gotta crank it up. But here we are. How about a flail axe? Um, it is scary. But the fact that it's scary couldn't possibly persuade you that this might be a bad idea. Need to practice on my aim. Did you see how close that got to his leg? Let's watch that again, slowly. It basically almost landed on his foot. This is one of those what could possibly go wrong kind of ideas where you best make up a story ahead of time that you're gonna tell the paramedics and the surgeon. Like a surgeon. Well, you see, I was chopping wood and the handle broke off and the axe head was stuck so firmly in the wood that I decided to attach a chain to it to try to pull it out. And I'm too strong, so I pulled so hard that it fell right into my foot. You know. I mean, better than one of those stories where somebody was putting up a curtain rod or dusting the top of a shelf naked and then fell off the step ladder onto various objects, their butt just magically found like a homing missile. You know the kinds of stories I'm talking about. Thanks, internet. Didn't need to know that. Well, I didn't expect that. Wonder how many attempts it took that were edited out. There's really nothing to guide the edge, unlike, you know, the boring old conventional design where you have a rigid object that connects the blade to your arm, so you actually have a way of guiding it, as opposed to it wildly flopping around. It's almost like it's made on purpose that way. If at first you don't succeed at accidentally maiming yourself, do a double take. Let's just give it a go. Well, when it works, it's pretty satisfying. Can't deny that. <laughs> yes. Again, I wonder how many takes. Looks impressive though, this so way. So is it a good axe for splitting wood? No. No shit. It's a fun video though. I'll link it down below, just like the others I'm gonna talk about. There's a video on Todd's workshop with Matt Easton where they show a type of flail that would actually be suitable for this. Of course, this can only flex in one plane. Oh, well, it can flex a little bit from side to side, but just like a bicycle chain or a motorbike chain, it is designed to really only go one way. So if you put an axe on this, you might have halfway decent edge alignment. Ironically, this type of flail isn't actually needed. There is no alignment to worry about. Any part of the weight that you hit with is all good. I also made a video with something similar back in 2018, which um, worked some of the time. So you can see sometimes it hits pretty well and does a significant amount of damage. Sometimes it's suboptimal, but still does some damage. And then other times it hits flat and doesn't do much of anything. And just in case you were wondering, what happens if you take an axe and strip away what makes it effective, being a heavy load at the end of a lever? Well, this guy has got you covered. He's got a hand axe. Well, it works for splitting wood. He makes it look effortless and effective. Um, what he doesn't tell you is how much his arm is hurting at the end of this. Because every time he's doing this, he's slamming his forearm into a bar of steel with no padding, no less. As opposed to a traditional axe where the wooden handle absorbs some of the impact, shock, and vibration. Well, like this person points out, it's more effective than a barehanded karate chop. So it's something. And this other comment about rotator cuff tears hits too close to home. Internal crunching noises and cursing. Yeah, I'm all too familiar with that. I've never even done something this silly. I just get injured in the gym. Yay. It's not even fun. Don't mind me, just a cramp. <sighs> Hell of a cramp. I saved the best one for last. If you thought there is a disregard for safety on the Slingshot channel, you clearly haven't watched I Did a Thing who would just be like, hold my spider juice. This is an axe leg thing that I built, which can easily chop through a cow's leg bone. One. 
So how easily can it cause arthritis in your knee and hair fractures in your shin bone? Last time I used this exoskeleton, I think I broke my toe. So Would you have guessed that if you combine a spring-powered steel contraption with human bones that are protected by nothing more than leather, that this might happen? So this time, I added more protection for my feet. Wait, what? More protection for my feet. Protection for your fate? I mean, come to think of it, you haven't chopped off your head with your machete ceiling fan or exploded parts of your body with your gun hammer. So your fate must be on your side, keeping you safe. So yeah, you might as well try to protect your fate, right? And also upgraded the springs on the side for heaps more power. Because once you've already broken your toe, the best thing to do is more power. This channel is awesome, by the way. I can do a lot more kicking. What could possibly go wrong? I don't know. We'll see, I guess. This? This could possibly go wrong. Yep, strapping a fragile human leg into a spring-powered steel contraption and then kicking an unyielding object like a tree. What could possibly go wrong? Um, I'll repeat myself, but this channel is awesome. Do check it out. He does so many insane things that are insanely entertaining. How can you top this? That, that's why I left it for last. I don't think you can. Now somebody's gonna try. You gotta build like a rocket propelled axe or something. But my two cents are, there's nothing wrong with this, okay? It's dangerous enough as it is. People have chopped uh, their kneecaps in half and embedded these into their feet, even without the help of springs and chains and anything like that it's dangerous enough leave it be however kudos to all of you for sacrificing your personal security for our viewing pleasure it's appreciated thank you for watching i uh, hope you found it entertaining as well and uh, take care be safe well who am i to lecture people on safety i should be resting i know but the channel isn't gonna run itself.